Good morning guys, Mike here. Today I'm doing a little bit of maintenance work on one of my shop tools. This is uh, what I call a mill block. Um, and you can see it's, it's kind of pitted. The moisture has gotten to this thing and I, it's really pretty disgusting. So I'm going to clean it up, re-square it. Um, not that it's out of square, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll go through the, the whole process. But what I wanted to talk about today is uh, surface grinding. And I've had a lot of questions regarding this. Uh, I've spent quite a few hours on a surface grinder in my day. And I use some terms when I answer questions that maybe some of the folks out there in home shops don't really understand what I'm talking about. So I wanted to clarify that a little bit today. So I'm going to go through this and I'll answer maybe a few questions. And the first thing you, you want to do is, before you start any surface grinding job, is to prepare your chuck. And when I say that, basically we're going to make sure that there's no dings or burrs or grit or dirt on this chuck. Mine's in pretty good shape. It's been dressed recently and uh, there's no reason to think that that's not still in good shape. So the first thing you want to do is run a stone lightly over your chuck to make sure that uh, it's good and clean and flat. And since I forgot my bench stone, I'm going to go get it right now. So this is my bench stone. It's uh, fine on one side coarse on the other. I rarely use the coarse side but uh, I do use the fine a lot and the whole purpose here with stoning off a, a machine tool table or a magnetic chuck is to not remove re material but basically what you're doing is you're just feeling uh, to find any uh, raised surfaces or anything of that sort. So we're just going to run it across here and I don't feel anything that's running across smooth we're not really removing any material we're just trying to find any abnormalities on this thing that feels pretty good so we're done by the way this is a uh, uh, bear brand stone and uh, these will last a lifetime if you take care of them keep them clean and and uh, and resurfaced and uh, so anyway we're done with this stone we're going to put this up I keep it in the I keep it in the box this is the original box this thing's probably 50 years old and uh, I keep it in the box because if you drop these once um, they do break so keep them nice now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to dress the, our wheel and a couple terms that I use is a uh, quick pass and open dress and what I what I mean by open dress is uh, is basically you don't want to you don't want to dress it real fine now this is not a real sharp diamond it's 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 reasonably sharp but uh, really the sharper the diamond you have the better but uh, we're going to use what we've got here so what I do uh, since I haven't had my grinder on yet I'm just going to run my stone across, or my diamond across, and uh, I lean down and I catch, catch the light, and I can bring this thing, I can bring this wheel down to within probably, you know, a, a, probably a couple thousands. Okay, so now I'm down close. I haven't even locked my table down. I don't think it's necessary, and uh, I'm going to make a, a quick pass or two and um, that should do it. Okay. The magnet's on. And just for the fun of it, I wonder how close I come down to it. So, it is one, one thousandth. I was within one thousandth by just watching the light between the diamond and the wheel. So, here's what I call a quick pass. Okay, uh, another half thousand, 
and back. So feed down, one pass across at about a thousand, and bring it back without changing anything, and uh, that should be dressed. Now how do I know that I've got the whole bottom and the wheel dressed? Because, let's face it, when you use this thing, it breaks down on one side or both sides, depending on the, uh, the, the direction that you're uh, feeding. What I do is I listen to it, and when I hear uh, when I hear sound all the way to the edge of the wheel, then I know I've, I've got to cross the wheel. Another way to check is uh, by looking at the bottom of the wheel, and you can see uh, at what point the wheel is broken down from your last grinding pass. And when I look at it, if it's clean all the way across, uh, I can see just a little bit of dirt here on the side, but if it's clean all the way across, I know I've got it uh, dressed satisfactory. And uh, in case you're wondering why I'm wearing gloves, it's 46 degrees in here. I don't keep it real warm in the wintertime. So, uh, especially this hand, I've, I've got a pretty, in the past, I've got a pretty good cut on this finger and it uh, loses its, its uh, circulation pretty easy. So, I don't want to lose that finger, so, uh, so I take pretty good care of it. So, uh, that's what that deal is about. Alright, so, get the diamond off. Oops. <laughs> Now, my workpiece. Now I'm going to take my bench stone and I'm going to give my workpiece a uh, a very uh, light going over, and I can feel nothing on this. And I don't see anything outstanding there. So that's good. My chuck's good. Now I can I can lay my workpiece down on the chuck. I'm going to start with the biggest surface. This is enough surface area that I don't have to block it up. If this was real thin or very small work surface, I'd, I'd put uh, something behind it to hold it from slipping on the chuck. Okay, but I don't need to, so chuck on. Again, I'm going to crouch down and, and look at the light behind the wheel. Now, if you don't have anything light colored in the background, um, you might want to tape a piece of paper back there or something like that that you can check. So now, I'm down there probably, eh, probably within a couple. So, okay, wheel on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the wheel on. I'm going to take uh, a pass across here and I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to turn my blower on or my vacuum. You're not going to want to listen to that and you're not going to probably watch me go all the way across. Well, maybe I will leave the the camera on for that pass. We'll go ahead and, and do that. I'm going to start off my workpiece. Wheel on, that on.
okay, <clears throat> what did I just do? I just took about uh, a thousandths and a half off of this, and uh, I used about probably uh, two thousandths cross feed. Uh, of course, it's all manual, but uh, probably two or three thousandths every pass uh, across, or I should say in advance. This is an unbalanced wheel. I've never balanced a wheel in my life. Um, when you uh, are getting across here and you're getting uh, almost to the end, keep going, keep feeding until you run out of sparks. And that's just about it. Now, if this was a wet grinder and I was trying to reach a dimension and I had a lot of material on there, you know, I wouldn't hesitate to feed down 20 thousandths deep but I would have a light cross feed, maybe two or three thousandths cross feed uh, per pass. And uh, that's about all there is to it. I can see, I can see just a little bit of wheel bounce here, but that's going to be okay because this is going to be used on a mill. And um, you know, if I get this thing within, you know, about a thousandths of being square. Um, that's good enough. Uh, getting any closer than that is just a waste of time. If this was going to be a tool that was going to um, be a work holding for something that I was going to surface grind, then I'm going to slow down and I'm going to try to get it within uh, tenths, maybe uh, within two or three tenths. Uh, but since this is for a mill, um, you know, this is, you know, inside of thousands is good enough. If it was for a drill press, you know, get it within 10 or 15 thousandths inside that, you know, that's going to be good enough. If you, if you shoot for too close a tolerance, you're just wasting time. And it's just money out the, the window. Uh, in the case of, uh, you know, if you're not doing it for money, it's, it's still just a waste. So anyway, that's, that's my outlook on it and uh, you can take that for what it's worth. So now that I made the first pass, I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to put it up against the back rail and I'm going to um, grind this surface here and I have a relief cut in it so we're going to get real close. I, there's no reason to re-grind this shelf right here but uh, we're going to get real close to that shelf and uh, we're going to uh, feed this way and uh, the breakdown on my wheel is here so I'm going to keep working the breakdown on that side but of course you know I can't afford to have any breakdown on my wheel up close to that shelf it has to be nice and sharp and flat so we're going to go up close to the shelf and then feed in this direction so I'm up against the back rail magnet on and I'm going to uh, position this close within my eye and uh, normally I would do this with a wheel on since I have to talk to you guys um, I'm going to leave the wheel off so you can hear. Now this is a little trickier to, to get close because uh, the shelf blocks my view of anything uh, contrasting in the background but there is still some light that's bouncing between the uh, wheel and this surface right here so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, come down and watch that light bouncing back and forth until it narrows down uh, to a, a substantial amount. And because this wheel isn't running, I can I can spin it a little bit until I hear something. Okay. All right. Let's see. All right. So now I'm real close, and uh, I'm as close as I need to be to this shelf and be into this uh, relief cut, and so I don't have to do anything with my table in this direction. Um, so all I got to do is come down until I get to depth here, and then I'll feed out, and that surface should be done. Okay, magnets on, double check that. Okay, here we go.
Daisy. Okay. That should be all right. Let's see if I can clear it now. Okay, I can just clear it. All right. So now we're back in business, tighten this down. Okay. Just to the side here. Still close. Okay, on goes in the blower. Okay, notice I kept going until I ran out of sparks. And uh, so as the sparks begin to diminish, um, there's a tendency to want to increase your cross feed. And uh, I would recommend that you don't increase your cross feed, even though you're just feel feeling or seeing a few sparks, you know, just keep cross feeding at the same rate until you totally can't see sparks anymore. And then you know that you've You've gotten the breakdown on your wheel well behind, uh, well past the the point of uh, of the edge. And you know, also people seem to think, from what I see in the comments, people seem to think that you have to have a mirror finish. Now this is a pretty shiny finish here, but it's it's really not necessary. That's largely due to the fact that my diamond is pretty well rounded over, but. Um, Actually, if you run your fingernail across this, if you can feel a little bit of grain or a little bit of tooth, um, you know, that's that's really your best finish. I can't really feel much here, but uh, uh, this isn't the best surface grain that, that I've ever done. So anyway, uh, that's that. Again, I have to reiterate, this is just the way I do it. This is just um, some of the things that I've learned. I'm using a 46H wheel. That's my favorite go-to wheel for uh, just about everything. You know, unless I unless I have to have a, a really sharp edge, like um, uh, well, you know, let's say your corner edge has to be as sharp as you can get it. You go to a harder wheel, and um, you know, you might get it down uh, with a 46H or 46. Eye or something like that as close as you can and then maybe just go back with your hard wheel maybe oh uh, maybe up to 120 well an 80 
80 to 120 wheel to, to sharpen your corner out. Okay, well, we're going to flip it over and we're going to do that uh, wide surface on the back. Now normally I wouldn't keep turning my wheel off either, but uh, since I want to talk to you guys, I, I'm going to turn it off just to, uh, so you can understand me. Now, you notice I'm not just uh, taking a brush and brushing this off and calling it good. I like to use my bare hand, um, especially uh, because this is a dry grinder or I, I don't run coolant on it. Uh, my hand is nice and dry. I like to feel, I, li I want to feel that chuck. I want to feel that not only do I have the large grits off of there, grinding grit, but also I've got all the fine dust off there as well. And that feels pretty good right there. And you're going to find that's where your chuck wears out, is right, right kind of in the middle where you do most of your grinding because, you know, when you, when you pull your workpiece off, even though you've got the magnet off, it still drags across that dust, so um, that's, that's normally the area where your chuck is going to uh, wear. So, now what I'm going to do is, even though this is a fresh surface, I'm going to run my, my uh, bench stone across there. So that's all that's going to take. Now I got a large surface to do here. Lay this down on my chuck and I'm just moving it just a little bit. If there was anything between there, I could feel that, but uh, I don't feel anything at all. So, so that's pretty good right there. Turn the magnet on. It's on there good and solid. I'll roll up to it. And uh, I'm going to come down close. Like I say, this could be done with a wheel on easily. It's, there's, there's not that big a danger. I'm going to get down close. I'm watching, I'm playing the light between the wheel and the workpiece. That's pretty close. It's as close as I want to go. Now I'm going to turn on my, my uh, vacuum and I'm going to turn on the wheel. I'm going to take a trip across here. And uh, anything after this, I'm going to redress my wheel because uh, actually I probably ought to redress it now. But I can see breakdown. I can see the dirt on the bottom of the wheel. I see breakdown about uh, uh, probably 20% of the way across there. So I still have plenty of sharp wheel left. So here we go. Okay, I've stopped here just a moment because I wanted you to notice that uh, now that my wheel is starting to break down, you, you see a wider band of sparks. Well, as it breaks down, the wheel turns into a little bit of a wedge shape on the leading edge, and uh, so that has more wheel in contact with the uh, uh, workpiece. So, that's where you have to start worrying about heat buildup. Now, I don't have to worry too much about that because I have a pretty wide, or a pretty large uh, workpiece here, quite a bit of mass, and it's 46 degrees in here, so that's probably not going to be a problem. But I can see evidence of some wheel bounce, and the reason for that is because the wheel is contacting the workpiece over a greater area, putting more force on the wheel and the wheel mount, so uh, I'm continuing to feed at the same rate, but this wheel wants to uh, kind of uh, resist the, the amount of stock that I'm taking off. I'll go ahead and finish this path, and notice I, uh, for roughing this thing in, or for general grinding, I've been using this, this one edge here on the front edge of the wheel, um, and I, without dressing, I think I can get by with uh, feeding back the other direction now and uh, using the sharp edge that's untouched on the back side of the wheel and uh, we'll see if we can uh, make a successful pass across there uh, with a good uh, decent uh, looking pattern.
Okay, now we've made it across there pretty good. We got kind of a funky looking finish here, but uh, everything's nice and cool. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind this is nice and flat. An obvious thing, don't ever stop in the middle of a cut with your wheel on the workpiece. You know, make sure you're off the wheel, the workpiece, because, um, you know, it, it could lift. Uh, and dig in and burn your workpiece. You can tell when your wheel starts to load up because, because of the width of the sparks across the bottom of the wheel, uh, the, num the amount of sparks that's coming off the back, and the sound, you know, you have to use your ears too. Uh, it's more of a, when it's, when it's grinding good uh, and healthy, it's, it sounds more like zing, zing, zing. And when it starts to load up, it'll start happening over a short period of time. It'll kind of go from a zing, zing to a onk, 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 and it's loading up. That's no good. So, uh, just a couple of things to bear in mind. So, now we'll take this off the chuck and, uh, I guess we're ready to grind the bottom. All right, so now I set it on my angle plate in preparation to grind the bottom of it. And um, so I ran my indicator across it to see uh, what we looked like. The first thing I noticed is this surface is pretty well free of pits and it uh, looks like it's in pretty good shape. Now we'll just take a quick check. Uh, I hope you can see this. Just a second, let me refocus. So, so running an indicator across this, we have zero, zero, coming down to this end I have zero well wait a minute I bumped my indicator okay we have zero and zero so there's no reason to touch this surface I mean after all somebody paid to have carburizing and put on this or to have this surface the whole thing carburized so why grind it off so uh, we'll we'll avoid grinding this surface but the other side it looks a little bit scabby and I was going through my my jeweled surface days and I jeweled it I think that looks kind of cheesy and it does have some pitting on the top surface so we'll put it on this surface and we'll grind the top surface just for cosmetics so here's the top surface and uh, you can see some pitting here and it was jeweled at one time. I don't know what I was thinking of. I think it looks terrible so I'm going to grind that right off. Alrighty, so here we go. Alright, when you dress your wheel, position your diamond on the kind of the back side of the wheel, slightly off center to the back side. Uh, if you're on the front side, if you accidentally hit your table or um, the diamond was loose and lifted it, it could cause your uh, wheel to explode on you or fly in pieces. Whereas if you're on the back side, it has less tendency to do that. It, it has more of a tendency to push the diamond out of the way. So keep it on the uh, downward side of your, the downstream side of center on your wheel. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, dress this baby again. Get ready for our next cuts. So, bag on, diamond feels good. Uh, get it down close here. Like I say, I'm doing this with the wheel off. You don't have to, the wheel can be on, it doesn't matter.
Okay. Alrighty. And here we go. Okay, as you can see, a half a thousand's cleaned it up really nice. So, um, I think actually we're done with this. Uh, the two, two mistakes that I see people making is uh, not dressing their wheel often enough, keep a good, sharp, open dress. And the other thing is, is too heavy of a cross feed. I mean, uh, a couple, two or three thousandths um, is is going to work out better for you than a, a big uh, whopping, you know, ten or fifteen thousandths. I mean, basically, with ten or fifteen thousandths, all you're going to do is break your wheel down, and when you're running on a broke down surface, you know, you're just it just compounds your problems. So keep a good sharp edge on your wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the keys in the bottom of this, and I'll show you what this thing is for and it's kind of a nice to have thing I don't use it a lot uh, but uh, it did come in handy on some jobs and I would like to say one theory I have is uh, uh, regarding this whole to balance a wheel or not balance a wheel uh, controversy that's going on um, I, uh, I've never been totally convinced that that's really necessary you know, I guess if you're striving for perfection, you know, maybe. But uh, when you think about it, your wheel is mounted with paper washers between the between the spindle of the machine and the wheel itself. And uh, and there's clearance around the wheel to the spindle too. So if you push your wheel too far into needing a dress, um, I'm kind of convinced that uh, putting that much force on your wheel can actually shift it on the hub. And what people are thinking is wheel out of balance is actually you're shifting the wheel off center and it's it's not running concentric with the spindle of the machine. So, you know, that's my theory on it, but uh, I've never felt like I had to do it. And maybe I, I haven't always got the perfect surface finishes, but uh, you know, I mean, the name of the game is not surface finish, it's accuracy. So, um, okay, so that's just my two cents. So now we'll knock the keys in these things, and then over to the mill, and I'll, I'll show you how they work. Alrighty, so now uh, these are the bolts that hold this thing down, but uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm not going to. Oh, I got the wrong. Oh, I got the wrong keys on the wrong sides. Oh, dang. I don't see, maybe I can fix it.
already over to the mill. Okay, so here's how my little mill block works. It has uh, two keys in the bottom of it, and these keys are a good fit for Bridgeport uh, key slots, which are uh, uh, 5 8 So that fits on there like that. Just a very quick setup. Two bolts drop down through here, and uh, this is held on by T nuts, which I won't uh, put in place right now. But let's say you got something in your vise that you don't want to take loose, but you have a quick job that you have to do uh, to, uh, let's say, deck off the, this surface right here. So, so now you just put it in here, put a clamp on it like so, and uh, well, let's go ahead and go ahead and put it on. So, there you go. So, you come over here, you, you deck that off, and you haven't disturbed your uh, setup in whatever it is, whether it's a vise or rotary table or whatever. So, really quick to set up. The key ways to keep it in line with your direction of travel, and uh, you have all kinds of ledges and surfaces that you can clamp on to square a block up or really whatever you want to do. So, that's the way that works.